You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. I'm Julie Broadway, president at the American Horse Council. And I'm Emily Stearns, health, welfare, and regulatory affairs liaison for the American Horse Council. And you are listening to the special monthly American Horse Council episode of Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for January 2nd, 2024. It's time to hear from the American Horse Council in this monthly episode of Horses in the Morning. Good morning, Horse World. We're so excited that you are joining us today. I hope that you will um, really get a lot out of this presentation. And I have a special co-host today, and that's Emily Stearns, who introduced herself earlier as our Health, Welfare, and Regulatory Affairs Liaison. Megan Arsman, who's our um, Marketing and Communications person, had a conflict today, so got lucky, and Emily was available, so she's helping us out Uh, And we've had her on our podcast before uh, when we've done some legislative and some regulatory updates. But today it's intended to be a little more fun because she gets to co-host. I'm excited to be here today, Julie. Great. So as we kick off 2024, I'm really excited that we're finally being uh, able in a good position to kick off a new initiative. It's not all that new, but still a little new, uh, which is our marketing alliance for the American Horse Council. And they've been working on it for about the last year or so. And we're going to be talking to two very important people who are part of the marketing alliance uh, as we introduce our Here for Horses campaign. And so, Emily, this is one of those things that has evolved over time. And I'm really excited that we finally reached that precipice. Them Here for Horses is ready to kind of go out the gate, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, I was really excited to see what they were putting out at our conference last year. So I'm excited to see where we're going now. Yeah. So just a little bit of background about how we got to where we are, folks. So um, back when we went through the recession in 2007 and about 2008, um, we saw some some contraction of the industry. And so in 2000 and I don't know, 10, 11, um, a A number of industry executives got together to talk about how we might revitalize the industry. And the objectives of that meeting were restore demand for horse ownership, restore demand for equine events, uh, work together to improve the industry, increase awareness about the things that our industry is doing to help um, horses in aftercare um, and with welfare issues. So when this all started up, Um, A number of stakeholders in the industry got together to kind of outline what we wanted uh, to do as far as a campaign was concerned. The first few years, we really focused on taking horses to people by identifying uh, groups to bring horses to events and expos and sort of get a chance to test ride a horse. Uh, This was part of our Time to Ride campaign. Um, We discovered that that was a little bit challenging to to pull off from a resource point of view. So the second iteration of the program was to incentivize barns to host open houses and invite the local community to come in, touch a horse, and, and get exposed to horses. We found after a couple of years of that program, however, that a lot of the uh, barns uh, felt that it was a tremendous amount of effort um, to host these events and to try to uh, make all that happen. And it was it was becoming a little bit challenging on that part. Um, so the third iteration then became um, a program where we were certifying um, time to ride facilities um, that met certain standards um, and offered a series of lessons at a discount to try to create that kind of stickiness between the general public um, and our and our industry. Um, after a lot of soul searching and some strategic planning uh, work, that's how we got to the Here for Horses campaign. So I'm really excited to introduce our first guest today. It's Jen Grant. She's the head of marketing for the equine division of Zoetis, the world's largest company fully dedicated to animal health. In the three years Jen has held this role, her focus has been developing a portfolio brand that connects Zoetis and its products to both veterinary professionals and horse owner audiences that share a commitment to always be by the side of the horse and those who care for horses. 
The Long Live the Horse campaign Jen and her team have launched has touched a lot of heartstrings within the industry and been recognized with numerous marketing and advertising awards and underscores the collective commitment to caring for horses who do so much for us in return. Before joining Zoetis, Jen held 20 years of marketing experience across brands such as Lexus and Microsoft, as well as senior roles in the agency and consulting sectors. She is a member of the AHC's Marketing Alliance, where she can combine her commitment to horses with her passion for strategic brand marketing. Jen is also a lifelong equestrian and an active three-day eventer, and she is uh, claims that she is really blessed to share her life with four wonderful horses and two very clever German shepherds. And I'm certain that's going to be a, an interesting conversation to have just that right there. Um, but we also have a second guest with us today. So Emily, in, introduce our second guest. Yes, I'm excited that we also have Christy Landwehr with us. Christy has been an active in the horse industry for over 40 years, showing and training in many different breeds and disciplines at the local, regional, and national levels. She is very active within the Certified Horsemanship Association, as well as being an AQHA and APHA professional horseman. She's an active member of the Colorado Horse Council, AQHA National Marketing Committee, the American Horse Council Board of Trustees, and is the past president of the American Youth Horse Council. Christy has an undergraduate degree in public relations and speech communication from California State University Fullerton and a graduate degree in mass communication and journalism from University of Colorado at Boulder. Currently, she's the senior director of corporate relations for the National Reigning Horse Association and does strategic planning, facilitation, and mediation through her company, CJL Training for Organizations, and is a Real Colors personality trainer. Christy has spoken at numerous events and breed and discipline conventions throughout her career and lives in Aurora, Colorado with her husband, two sons, horses, chickens, cats, a dog, and a rabbit. And Christy, I assume maybe there are other animals there as well sometimes. Sometimes there are. <laughs> So these ladies have worked very hard with the American Horse Council. I'm always excited when we get to run in with them. So it'll be fun to talk with them and pick their brains about how we can market the horse to the everyday American. Welcome, Jen and Christy. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. Great. Well, before we launch into talking about the Marketing Alliance and Here for Horses, I just have to ask, um, how do you guys do all this? I mean, you're your um, bio is just so extensive. How do you juggle all these things that you do? <laughs> you know, it's called uh, a day timer and old school, write it down. I haven't even hit the technology <laughs> button yet. So yes. And I love crossing stuff off when I get it done. And I say, oh, in between this and this, I have one hour. And when you only have one hour, you tend to get stuff done. So keeping busy, I think, makes me do more. It's kind of bizarre, actually. And I think. To build on that, I think for both of us, this is most definitely a labor of love. And I think it's easy to lean in and make the time when you know you have the opportunity to help share the amazing connection that both of us have had with horses throughout our lives and throughout our careers and open that door for others. Uh, that certainly seems like something worth prioritizing our time for. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm a big fan of that uh, statement. If you want to get something done, ask somebody who has a full plate. So be careful, ladies. You you might get asked <laughs> to do something else. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, guys, talk a little bit about the Horse Council's Marketing Alliance and about the Here for Horses campaign. I, I recall that really what we wanted to accomplish through this most recent campaign was creating that lifelong engagement with the equine industry. Um, 38 million households in the U.S. contain a horse enthusiast. Those are not necessarily owners or participants, but people who are passionate or love horses. And we really want to build off of that. So talk a little bit about the Marketing Alliance and Here for Horses. It has been my pleasure to be a part of it. Um, I've been on the Marketing Alliance now for quite a while and have seen all those different nuances of it that you spoke about, Julie. And I just think that, you know, this current way that we're going is exciting because we have an opportunity on this website um, for people to know where to go to see horses and know where to go to experience them. 
And so those are two very different things. And then once they can dive into that, then they can see all the nuances of what all of that includes. So kind of at the 30,000 foot view level, um, I just feel that this next step is really good because um, if you ask probably the average person what they think um, horses are all about, they tend to say horse racing because that's the thing that's televised the most, right? Or they'll then maybe talk about a trail ride that they took somewhere. But there's so much more to our horse and industry. And I just think that this Here for Horses campaign will help us share that. Yeah, I'm struck, Julie, by the statistic that you just shared. You know, there are 38 million Americans out there who've professed an interest in horses. But when you do the math on that, less than 2% of those actually own a horse. And so there's clearly an opportunity. Anyone who's been around horses and felt that magnetism and that comfort that they can bring, I think has intuitively felt an attraction to them. But I think there's a bit of an intimidation factor and maybe there's an information gap factor in terms of how to go from admiring a horse in a movie or a book or at a race or at a local event to actually taking the next step and engaging with them. And so I think really Here for Horses is designed to do two things. It's first designed to help educate on the benefits of why horses are just so dang great, right? I think we all know that they bring a myriad of benefits to people from physical and mental to emotional, social, creative, and even sometimes spiritual. And so how do we help people understand that these animals can do so much for us? And then how do we give them the resources and give them the information to take that next step and find those pathways to accessing horses in their lives, whether it's through riding, whether it's through equine assisted services, or whether it's just getting out and engaging with some sort of equine based activity in their community. And so, um, like Christy said, you know, having here for horses as a platform to do that and do that nationally is a really exciting next step. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I know we're very excited about the campaign. And as Emily referred to, um, when we had our conference back in June, uh, the, you both were kind enough to talk about the campaign with the conference attendees and everybody came away excited. And just so the listeners know, right now, the Marketing Alliance is composed of the American Association of Equine Practitioners, the American Paint Horse Association, the American Quarter Horse Association, the Certified Horsemanship Association, Equine Network, National Reigning Horse Association, Purina, United States Equestrian Federation, United States Pony Club, Zoetis. And coming out of conference, we got some new folks that signed on. That included Barn Wiz and the National Snapple Bit Association and the National Open Horse Show Association and Equifest of Kansas. So we've got some great people that are very excited and really behind this program. Um, Jen, tell me personally, what do you think was the real um, biggest challenge to getting this campaign off the ground? <laughs> well, after sitting in two years, I think it was, of uh, strategic planning meetings with our very passionate and very vocal marketing alliance, I think, honestly, it was figuring out where we wanted to focus our time and resources. I think all of us from our various organizations feel a passion for the horse feel a passion for the industry and feel a passion for advancing that and sharing it with others. I think it can be hard to even know where to begin, right? If it's hard for someone on the outside to figure out how to take that first step into horses, I think it was equally hard for us as an industry to figure out exactly where we wanted to prioritize our efforts. And I think that's doubly so because so often as an industry, we're used to talking amongst ourselves. I mean, the Marketing Alliance wouldn't exist if we didn't. And I think that's fantastic. But Here for Horses was challenging us to look at a ring broader of that onion and really say, how do we start to engage with and how do we develop a message for the person who's maybe horse curious, but isn't quite horse crazy yet? And so to do that, we really needed to work through positioning exercises. We really needed to take a hard look at the data and understand what our opportunities were. Uh, We even looked at out of category practices. You know, how did other industries like RVing or fishing start to bring in new members and start to build that bridge? So I think honestly, um, the hard part wasn't building the passion or, or knowing where we wanted to go. It was figuring out how do we start to eat that elephant and where do we focus our time and energy to help build that next chapter of engagement. Turn your love of horses into savings with equine discounts through the NTRA. Purchase through equine discounts and receive great savings on well-known brands like John Deere, Sherwin-Williams, Big Ass Fans, Farmers Insurance, 
and Office Depot. Join thousands of other equine members and support companies that give back to the industry we all love. Call 866-678-4289 or visit equinediscounts.com to start saving today. I think Jen said it great. I think all of those things are absolutely true, that those were our biggest challenges. Um, You know, the forest for the tree concept, right? We're in the forest. We live in the forest. We work in the horse industry. We're part of the forest. So how do we get out of that and share it with others? Because we all know how wonderful it is. And then how do we make all of the nuances easier to navigate because it's very convoluted. All the different breeds, all the different disciplines, all the different um, opportunities to go to a dude ranch or trail ride or whatever the case may be. And how do we make that more uh, uh, kind of a one-stop shop, right? For people to find those things. And that's what I think the Here for Horses campaign is doing. Awesome. Awesome. Emily, did you have a question? Well, it just makes me think, you know, I'm of the generation on the social medias and of every meme going around, you know, the mom in the car pointing out the window, horses, horses, and all the kids are looking out the window. And it makes me think of really kind of what you guys were talking to. How do we go from moms pointing out the windows to kids or grown adults, as my mother still points out the window to her grown children in the car? How do we get those looking out the window horse lovers into our association, our horse shows, and our barns. In some ways, you hit the nail on the head of a really interesting topic, which is just the proliferation of horses being present on social media, you know, the presence of more and more opportunities to seek out information, right? We've all heard about uh, Dr. Google and the ability to feel like you have more information than ever at your fingertips, which is great, right? It's fantastic as a resource to empower people to find information. But I think it can also be intimidating when someone maybe is interested in horses and wants to go from looking at the window and pointing at them and getting excited uh, to actually taking the step of engaging with them or going to a local event. And so um, part of the goal with Here for Horses was to really create that platform and create a destination so that instead of having to go web page after web page or ask friends or family members who are maybe uh, engaged in the horse community about how to take that next step, that we could actually have a consolidated resource with verified trusted information from brands and participants that are already here and engaged so that someone can really go and peruse what their different options are and then take the next step. Uh, so I think in a lot of ways, trying to be almost that middleman or that handoff to facilitate those pathways to equine connection was very much a motivator of here for horses. Right. And I, it, it occurs to me, Jim, that I need to put a plug in right here that says if you go out to our website here for horses and um, you don't see an activity listed that you think needs to be highlighted, by all means, reach out to us at the Horse Council and let us know so uh, we can get that added. Right now, um, we we are listing. It's like a huge, to Jen's point, it's a huge directory of all kinds of things you can see or you can experience. And we've tried to think of everything we could possibly think of. But hey, somebody's probably got something we hadn't come up with. So reach out to us and let us know if there's something else that needs to be um, front and center um, on that website. Uh, Christy, do you have anything you want to add to what Jen said? Well, I would just love to add the concept of also, if you're listening and you happen to be within our um, world of horses, whether you're a breed association, a discipline organization, a dude ranch, a, um, like what's going on with uh, Equifest in Kansas, let's say you're another type of horse event that's going on, whether it's a horse show or whether it's a um, local place for a trade fair that's happening in education. Let us know if you want to be on Here for Horses because we would like to list your event. We want to know more about it and we want to kind of entice you to become a part of the marketing effort for all of us as these organizations and associations and companies to reach out to be able to get that um, new enthusiast excited and engaged and a part of our journey. Yeah, great. Now, um, I, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but um, the American Horse Council uh, offers some fantastic internship programs, and we have an intern joining us in January, going to be dedicated just to working on the Marking Alliance and the Here for Horses campaign. So um, what should we expect from Here for Horses, say, in the new year? 
growth. If we're going to have somebody like that, it's going to be fantastic to be able to see the enthusiasm, be able to put on social media more posts and things about Here for Horses, and then have all of us, whomever we work for, whether it's a company like Jen does or an association like I do, be able to kind of get targeted messages to do on certain even times of the year, times of the month, to kind of do it all on the same day so that people are just like, whoa, this Here for Horses is everywhere today. It's on my Instagram. It's on my Facebook. I mean, who knows? Maybe even TikTok, right? All of those kinds of things I think would be very, very helpful to um, engage and to get people excited. And maybe we'll even create our own memes, Emily, and we have our own, you know, people pointing at the horses as we go by. And then we have and go here for horses for your next step. I think fun things like that would really be enticing. Awesome. We could get you a meme intern. <laughs> Jen, do you want to add anything? I'm already salivating over the idea of a meme intern. And I'm wondering, <laughs> if, you know, maybe there's a different career in my future, but uh, I don't know that I'm funny enough, actually. So I'll probably leave it to a different generation. But no, I mean, I, I think, you know, as I was listening to Christy talk about our goals and, and that vision for growth and all of us coming together as an industry, it just strikes me that you know, so often, even though all of us, all of the companies and organizations that the Marketing Alliance represents are part of the horse industry, so often when you look at it, it's almost like we're we're segmenting the industry, right? What color of horse do you ride? What breed? What type of tack do you use? What sport do you participate in? What type of equine assisted services do you provide? And what I think is just so special about Here for Horses and, and the genesis behind it with the Marketing Alliance has been that we've really set our differences and our niche within the industry aside and said, great, we're hoping to find pathways so that we find more people who are passionate about these different things. But first of all, first and foremost, we're all here because we're passionate about the horse. And so whatever facet of the industry we represent, we're coming together as a collective to say, however you want to engage with horses, it's pretty amazing. And so we want to provide that platform for you to have those experiences. And then you can go as deep as you want and you can get as focused and as niche as you want. But I think it's pretty special to see our industry kind of take a step back. And instead of looking at the things that make us different and that make us unique, we're starting from a place of really shared passion and shared common ground. Oh, I love that. And I have to tell you that um, one of the things I really personally hope that Here for Horses will do um, will be a mechanism for anybody um, to identify with our industry. Um, you know, go there, see all the things that we offer, but also see yourself in this space. Uh, to your earlier remark, I think, Jen, you know, sometimes um, people feel intimidated uh, and or maybe they don't see themselves in some of the things that we do or they don't they don't think they fit in somewhere. Um, you know, I think back to um, other industries that we interviewed when we were working on this project and the perceptions that people have of, say, yachting or golf, or, and they sort of throw equestrian sometimes into that same uh, bucket of, you know, you guys are are wealthy, uh, you know, sort of high-end uh, hobbies kind of thing. Um, and that's not the the case. And we've learned that through our economic impact study. Um, and I really want people to be able to to sort of see themselves in this space. I had that same thought, Julie, just as you started saying it, that this seems like such a great opportunity to help share horses with everybody in a way that's so much different than us just trying to talk to each other amongst our own communities. So, um, gals, talk a little bit about um, sort of where to from here with this uh, with this program. What what do you think are sort of some of the next steps? Christy talked about growth, and I think we still have our work cut out for us just within the industry to kind of continue to spread the message, continue to build our coalition, continue to round out any gaps so that we're really showing that full face of all the different ways you can engage with horses. And that'll probably keep us plenty busy and certainly will keep our new intern busy for uh, the year to come. But I think Long term for me, what I'm excited about is when we're able to kind of kick into high gear that next layer and start to engage companies, individuals, municipalities, you know, whatever the organization is, but start to engage beyond the horse industry and start to build those connections of other partners or other organizations who also see a shared value 
in helping people connect with horses and uh, are also excited about kind of prioritizing these pathways. Uh, because again, we know that horses fulfill so much in people, they provide so much uh, different benefits to their lives. And I think there's plenty of stakeholders beyond our current industry who could really benefit from um, and and who could help individuals benefit from making those pathways. So to me, that's the long-term vision. Um, but we certainly have our work ahead of us just as an industry to kind of continue to round out our participation and our involvement as we build to the next step as well. Awesome. And I would, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I would 100% agree with what Jen just said that um, our future level would be to get out of the choir and recruit, right? Mm -hmm. And um, have the people that maybe are more in the recreational sector and have never really thought about it, or maybe their kids are involved in other sports and they never really saw horseback riding as a sport. And just being able to realize maybe they thought it was always not accessible and how maybe accessible it really is. So that getting beyond our own walls, I think is key. And I think that this Here for Horses campaign can do that. Awesome. So I have to share a personal story. I was recently in Tucson, Arizona for a speaking engagement. And while I was there, I took the opportunity to go over and visit my friends at the White Stallion Ranch. He is Russell True. He is a third generation dude ranch owner and operator. Uh, and I had never been there in person. And so I took a, a nice leisurely trail ride, got my husband on the horse for the first time, ladies. I'm going to take great pride in that. I got pictures too. Um, but I went, I was talking with the people standing around as we were getting ready to be mounted onto our horses. And I said, have you um, been on a trail ride before? And the one lady next to me said, well, I used to be a dressage rider, but as I've gotten older, I've done more recreational trail riding. So this is my second time at the ranch. And then next to me was three generations, a granddad, a dad, and the son. And they were decked out, ready to go on their trail ride. And the little boy is just so enamored. And he was begging dad to buy him a pair of chaps. And so I, I, want, I want to bottle all that enthusiasm and tell people that once you get into this space, there's all kinds of different ways you can enjoy it, things you can do in it, um, and lots of ways to do it as a family and as a community. Well, Julie, what you just said really sparks me because, you know, my passion is teaching beginners to ride. And I have taught so many people to ride. And some of them have gone on to become um, professional trainers in our industry, have gone on to win world championships and done all the things. And then others just come for a little bit. And they're just a part of the journey and they buy the pair of boots and they buy the helmet and then they maybe in the future might do something with it. So there's so many different ways. And it's not like if you get involved in it, you have to stay in it forever. But if you want to come and just dabble in it and just see what it's all about. But I'll tell you, huh? Be, be aware, parents, that let your children ride because it is a disease with no cure. <laughs> and uh, a lot of things might occur from it. But um, it is it is just a pleasure to watch beginners that have never been around horses interact with them, whether it's on the ground grooming them, uh, whether it's getting on them for the first time and riding, whatever it is, it is just a pleasure. I can also add that um, having been to an equine assisted services facility and um, served as a sidewalker. Um, it's amazing to me how many people volunteer in that space of our industry and discover how much they love horses and they enjoy being around them. And they go on to do something else in the space. It's just, it's one of those things that you're describing, Christy, which is once you get in, boy, you're, you're you go deep. <laughs> you get hooked. <laughs> I, I, you, you sparked a, a personal story on that front. So I, uh, I live in Southern Pines in North Carolina, which is a uh, eventing Mecca for those of us crazy people who uh, who do three-day eventing. And I'm also fortunate to have a, a wonderful significant other in my life who's, who's uh, born and raised here, or at least raised here. And he came to one of my horse competitions and, you know, cheered me on, which was a great first step. But he remarked and he said, you know, gosh, I can't believe that I've lived here my whole life and I've had, you know, this amazing horse park only 10 minutes away, but I never thought to seek that out for recreation. I never thought to come to spectate, even though as a kid, I used to go to summer horse camp and I used to love to ride. It just sort of never occurred to me, but now that I'm here, I'd like to do more. And I must confess that two weekends later, he bought a pair of riding britches and was on a trail ride. So, uh, it is certainly a, uh, it is certainly an addictive, uh, uh, a hobby or passion, but I would say when you think about all the things that you would want someone in your life, your kids, your friends, your parents uh, to, to take up, 
um, the, the fulfillment that comes from being with horses, whether you're riding or whether you're participating in volunteer work or whether you're just watching them do what they do, um, it pays dividends to all of us, I think, tenfold. Uh, and so being able to kind of share that magic and share that wonder with, with others who maybe have forgotten that it was an opportunity and make them see how accessible that opportunity is, I think is really what is just so powerful about what we're doing and why we're so committed to it. Awesome. Awesome. Any closing remarks, ladies, before we let you go? I would say the big thing is just get on the website. There's a great video right at the beginning on hereforhorses.com. You can check that out and then go ahead and play with it. It's very easy to navigate. It's um has great photos. It has limited text so you don't get bogged down. And it really is kind of fun to see. And then, like we had mentioned before, if you want to be a part of it, you know, reach out to American Horse Council and let us know um, if we've missed anything and we need to add it, or if you want your own organization, association, product, whatever the case may be, to be a part of it. And we would love to hear from you. Awesome. Jen, anything you want to add? Can't beat that. I mean, hereforhorses.org, it's an amazing resource. If you're someone who's interested in horses and maybe hasn't taken that step, hopefully this will give you the confidence to make it. If you're a part of the industry and haven't yet been involved with this coalition, we'd love your eyeballs. We'd love your visibility. We would love your platforms. And most of all, we'd love your support because truly this is one of those instances where a rising tide will lift all boats. And one of those rare chances where truly we can achieve a win-win, right? The win-win being, of course, bringing more people and exposing them to the wonder that horses can bring to their lives. And then of course, through that, benefiting all of us who are part of this industry and um, experience it firsthand every day. I, I just couldn't be more excited that we've come together as an industry to make that happen. I'm going to close with one one little observation that you've uh, prompted, Jen. Uh, I know a lot of the listeners for this podcast are people who already are in the horse industry. They're probably mucking the stalls while they're listening to this. So I encourage you to make people in your community aware of Here for Horses, expose them to that. And if you'd like to put a link on your particular website, uh, or whatever barn or whatever role you play in the industry, reach out to me and we'll see what we can do to make that happen because we want to spread the word far and wide. Here's some great reasons why your nonprofit should become a member of the United Horse Coalition. Through industry collaboration, the United Horse Coalition promotes education and options for at-risk and transitioning horses. Incentives for joining include access to a home for every horse training portal and other educational materials and programs assistance with promotion, networking with industry professionals, free listings on equine.com, Purina feed coupons. Join as a nonprofit or as a support organization. Become a member of the United Horse Coalition today. Find out more at unitedhorsecoalition.org slash become a member. So, Emily, we are down to our legislative update that we want to give each episode. And so the one that I have chosen to highlight today is H.R. 1319. It's called the BOLT, B-O-L-T, the BOLT Act, which stands for Biking on Long Distance Trails Act. And the House version of the BOLT Act that I just mentioned was recently added to the Bipartisan Explore Act, which is H.R. 6492, Uh, which sort of mirrors the American Outdoors Recreation Act. Now, that's a lot of acronyms and a whole lot of legislative jargon for you guys. Uh, But this particular um, act is about expanding biking on long-distance trails and um, sharing trails. Um, And so we really want to encourage this to move ahead. After all, mountain bikers need and deserve iconic long-distance trails and the experience that they provide. Um, But we don't want to have that happen at the expense of safety when we have multi-users on trails. So hikers and bikers and equestrians share a lot of trails. And so there are two versions to this uh, particular piece of legislation right now. Um, We are working very closely with the Outdoor Recreation Roundtable, People for Bikes, uh, the uh, International Mountain Bike Association, Backcountry Horsemen of America. There's a huge coalition of us to try to navigate through the different versions. So the House version includes language that says, to avoid conflict um, with other uses, the secretary concerned shall ensure that each long distance bike trail or area identified under this section does not conflict with the uses before the date that the act was um, passed. 
any trail road um, that is part of a long distance bike trail and multi-use areas where biking, hiking, horseback riding, or use of pack and saddle stock are existing uh, on the date that this was moved into place um, for the purposes of which any trail was or established under the national trail system. So that's the House version. The Senate version says, same thing, conflict avoidance is important, but it it stipulates that before identifying a trail or road as a long-distance bike trail, the secretary concerned shall ensure that the identification of the long-distance bike trail would not conflict with existing use of trails or roads, including horseback riding or use of pack or saddle stock. So there's just a little nuance between the two, Emily. Senate version is one way. House version is sort of the same thing, but they have a little different twist. So I want um, our listeners to stay tuned. We're going to pay special attention to that. Uh, Recreational trail riding is one of the largest sectors in our industry. Uh, And when we talk to the National Park Service or the National Forest Service, we have millions of riders that ride uh, on these trails uh, each year. And so we want to make sure we're going to put the right things in motion for all users uh, and be able to do that safely and enjoyably. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you stopped by to listen. And if you're interested in learning more about Here for Horses, we'll provide some links in our show notes. We would like to invite you to join the American Horse Council and get subscribed to our monthly newsletter, which shares the latest in all of our legislative happenings, both federal and state, as well as some information that horse owners like you probably just need to know. Um, You can also follow us on our social media and look into becoming a member um, of your local state horse council or the American Horse Council to help support the beloved industry um, locally as well as at the federal and national level. I do want to pitch that the new economic impact study is due to be released probably sometime right after the first of the year. We're very excited to see what the numbers are going to look like. I can tell you from a preliminary peak um, that our uh, annual contribution to the economy has gone up. I'm really excited about that. Jobs have gone up, um, as have um, salaries and wages in our industry. So I'm excited to see what all that's kind of going to reveal. Um, so look for that probably um, in the middle of, I'm going to say mid, mid-January mid probably, Emily. Yes, we're working hard on it. As someone on the back end, we're <laughs> typing away. You can subscribe to Horses in the Morning on any podcast player and find all the shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. We hope everyone has a great start to the new year. Uh, So happy new year. Uh, Welcome 2024. And as always, as we like to say, hashtag here for horses. 